Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Farrell. I'm a fourth year OBGYN resident at, at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. Happy to be here today to talk about my paper. Excellent. And I'm Dennis Vaughn. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist at Boston IVF. I'm also the director of clinical research and the co-director of our Oncofertility group. And I had the pleasure of being affiliated with Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and working with our medical students and our residents. And Amanda Farrell is one of our stellar fourth year OBGYN residents and hoping to apply into REI, Reproductive Endocrinology Fellowship, and so approached us about doing research. And so Boston IVF has been long known for doing research and being a leader in terms of um, cutting edge research and developing technologies in the reproductive medicine space. And a really important topic as we see a shift in our field from fresh transfers to more frozen transfers, really looking at how we can optimize frozen embryo transfers, making sure that what we do is safe. And so the purpose of this study largely was to look at some outcomes related to perinatal health, that is the health of the individual carrying the pregnancy and the health of the neonate. So we analyzed frozen embryo transfers that occurred between 2014 and 2020 at Boston IVF. We were able to extract a total of 920 um, total cycles. And we wanted to look at patients who had undergone two different types of endometrial preparation protocols, which is to say how we get the uterus ready for the embryo uh, transfer process. Um, specifically, those protocols were called the modified natural protocol and the program protocol. And we compared the two groups of patients by uh, abstracting all of their demographic data from a, a chart review and looking at their um, pregnancy outcomes, both again for the person carrying the pregnancy as well as for the fetus and ultimately the neonate. Um, we looked specifically at understanding if there was an increased risk of outcomes such as preeclampsia, placental abruption, and intrauterine growth restriction for patients in these two different groups, again, the modified natural and the programmed um, group. And ultimately what we found is that when we compare these two uh, groups of patients, the program protocol is not associated with an increased risk of these outcomes, which as we know can be pretty devastating for our patients. Um, we also found that the infants that were born um, from the program protocol group tend to be um, larger infants, which is good. Um, and then we found that infants born from the programmed protocol um, tend to be born uh, via cesarean delivery um, as well. I think that a lot of patients are not even aware of the fact that there are different protocols for a frozen embryo transfer. A lot of centers in the U.S. focus on the program frozen embryo transfer protocol, and there are advantages in terms of being able to schedule a transfer on a particular date, keep the transfers between Monday and Friday, which is helpful from a staffing perspective for smaller clinics, um, whereas the modified natural cycle really is exactly that. It relies on the patient's own hormones to support and prepare the lining of the uterus. And whenever that individual's body is ready for trigger shot or ready to move forward with the transfer, we have to go with that. And that could fall on a Saturday or a Sunday. And so um, at Boston IVF, we're fortunate enough that we're a large enough center that we do transfers 365 days a year. So we really do give the patients the option to do either one. And there are pros and cons to both approaches. With the natural cycle, the patients are using less medication, but they're in and out for monitoring more frequently. Whereas with the program cycle, there's fewer monitoring appointments, but they're using more medications, inclu including intramuscular shots of progesterone, so higher doses of progesterone support. And so in our field, we've seen a shift from the end outcome of what we do, studying clinical pregnancy rates to live birth rates, and now looking beyond that to perinatal outcomes. And we previously published a paper last year led by Elizabeth Wolf, one of our um, OBGYN residents at Maine Medical Center. And we showed equivalent live birth rates between modified natural cycle and program cycle. And so Dr. Farrell took this a step further, examining the perinatal outcomes and showing that the perinatal outcomes are very similar between the two and that it really um, is up to the individual and their provider to discuss which protocol might be best for them in terms of discussing those advantages and disadvantages. But overall, this is very good news that the outcomes are very similar and it lends itself to an active discussion between the patient and their, and their doctor about which one is, is more suitable for the patient. So I think this is a really important because we've seen that there's been some discussion recently that the modified natural cycle 
may have had lower um, rates of preeclampsia or high blood pressure in pregnancy because of some substances that are produced by the ovary, the corpus luteum during a natural cycle that are not uh, present in a program cycle. And so there is a discussion about that and potentially a shift from the program cycles to the modified natural cycles. Um, but and the study reiterates that both are perfectly safe, both are great options for the patients. And so we're very fortunate now to be in to study this even further and what's considered the gold standard for studying in all of, of investigational medicine, which is a randomized control trial. And so Boston IVF is one of the larger centers in a prospective multi-center randomized control trial, examining live birth rates and perinatal outcomes in between modified natural and program cycles. And that study is led by a group at Johns Hopkins, Dr. Valerie Baker, and is termed the NACPRO study. And we're 90% through recruitment of that study. So we're all looking forward to results of that study, which we expect will support what we've just found, that there really is no major difference between the two. Um, but investigation is ongoing there. As residents, we are expected to participate in research because um, it's a really important um, exercise in understanding the questions that can help push the field forward and what people are interested in. So, for example, like Dr. Vaughn explained, um, perinatal outcomes are definitely a strong topic of interest in the field of REI. And for me, I was um, introduced to, you know, a lot of the background um studies that have been done on this that have said that there are differences between uh, in terms of outcomes, but um, it was really empowering to, to understand, you know, why this question was important and to get to investigate it through this project. And I would not have been able to do that without all of the research resources at Boston IVF and our strong um, patient database and, and just that connection that we have. Um, and for me, again, uh, in such an innovative field of REI, it really drew me in and continued to help um, further my interest in uh, being in REI as well. And I think that this particular research project highlighted the close connection that we have to the hospital because all the patients involved in this study were treated at Boston IVF. They got pregnant through treatment at Boston IVF. And then around eight weeks, we typically discharge the patient to their OBGYN. And their OBGYN in this study, they were all based at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And all of our patients in this study delivered at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And so we were able to track exactly how their pregnancy went and, and the health of both the individual carrying the pregnancy, as well as the fetus and, and neonate once born. And so having that close connection is really, really important. And is actually something that we need to continue to work on in our field because a lot of infertility practices can't track the outcomes of their of their pregnancies that are associated with treatment um, because the patients typically will get pregnant at the infertility practice, but then they'll go to various different hospitals in the area. And we're fortunate enough that we've got several great hospitals in the Boston area, but about a third of our patients at Boston IVF deliver at Beth Israel. And so we have a much closer connection with Beth Israel than we would some of the other hospitals and have access to the databases to be able to track those patients. And that really is super important in terms of being able to reassure patients that what we're doing is safe and safe for both them and, and safe for their the fetus and the neonate. So having that close collaboration is really, really important. Well, thank you all very much for joining and learning about our study. And thank you to Dr. Farrell for conducting the study and leading the study in mm -hmm. such a thoughtful and thorough manner. Yep. Thank you to Dr. Vaughn and Boston IVF for supporting the research.